Hi, I'm Stefan. I'm a pulmonologist and I would like in this video to discuss a little bit about pulmonary fibrosis. What is pulmonary fibrosis? This is a very, very important topic in pulmonary medicine because pulmonary fibrosis can be broadly subdivided into two categories. I would say this is not necessarily a medical classification, but it's what is clinically important. Progressive fibrosis, non-progressive fibrosis. First of all, let's define what is fibrosis. Fibrosis just means scarring. So if you imagine that, say, someone has an injury to their arm and they have a burn, and then that burn heals, but then the skin becomes a little bit abnormal. There's a scar tissue there. Basically, it's similar to what happens in the lungs. So in the lungs, although the lung looks like a sponge, uh, as you all know, it can also fibrose, it can also scar. If there is lung injury due to various, various things, it can also heal abnormally with scarring, with scar tissue, with fibrosis. And then the main thing, as I said, is whether this fibrosis is progressive or non-progressive. Progressive fibrosis means that once the scarring has begun, it advances slowly, slowly, bit by bit, and encompasses more and more of the lung. So that means the fibrosis is progressive. If the fibrosis is non-progressive, there has been maybe an injury to the lung. This could have been a bad infection. For example, infections such as TB, tuberculosis, can cause extensive fibrosis in the lungs that can sometimes be dangerous, but usually is not progressive. So it just stays the same. The injury, once it's been there, once the lung has been damaged, the damage does not get worse unless there is obviously a new infection or some other injury to the lung. Or there may be occupational or environmental exposures. For example, someone who has worked in a coal mine or has worked in sandblasting, did not use appropriate masks to protect the airways from all the dust that they've been inhaling, that can sometimes cause lung fibrosis. People who have been exposed to asbestos in the past can sometimes develop lung fibrosis that can be sometimes indistinguishable from other forms of fibrosis, which you may have heard of, such as IPF. The difference is that in some cases the fibrosis progresses and in some cases it does not. So conditions such as IPF or idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis are the ones that we fear the most because in those cases the fibrosis is progressive. With time it can only get worse and what we can do is to try to slow it down as much as possible with the medications we have available. But it's very very important to have an accurate diagnosis because just saying lung fibrosis, pulmonary fibrosis, lung scarring does not really mean much. We need to define whether this process does get worse with time or not? What might be the cause? These are all important because some treatments in some conditions, in some forms of fibrosis can completely stop it if administered correctly, whereas in others it can only slow it down. So this is very important to actually define. And progressive versus non-progressive is usually assessed by doing lung function repeatedly. So if we start with a simple spirometry, for example, at moment A, when the diagnosis is made, and we do another spirometry, let's say three months down the line, point B, if there's been a drop, we can think about the fact that the fibrosis might be progressive. Usually we need more than just two uh, bits of lung function. We may do lung function over a longer period of time to see whether there is, if you plot it on a graph, a descending slope basically on the lung function graphs and that's really the capacity of the lung if that is reducing it means that the fibrosis is getting to more and more parts of the lung and basically we're having less room to breathe less functional lung and if the lung function does register a decrease then probably your doctor will consider doing some form of lung imaging even a simple x-ray or more often a CT scan to assess in detail the amount of fibrosis on the lungs. I hope this clarifies what is pulmonary fibrosis to some extent. If you have further questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below, and I will try to make videos according to your comments to make them relevant to you. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in future videos.